Hello, my name is Obsidiman, and this is my comprehensive Interstellar Rift tutorial. The series that teaches you everything you need to know to play the game, from square one to square done. This episode covers how to fly a ship, including how to navigate around a star system at warp velocity. Before we get started, I want to quickly apologize for the lack of videos the past couple weeks. Suffice it to say, I was unable to make videos because of real life happenings. I'll be trying to get back to making at least one tutorial episode per week from now on. Now, let's get into the tutorial. Before attempting to fly the ship, let's get familiarized with the cockpit. First, sit in the pilot's seat by looking at it and pressing E. You can look around your cockpit by holding down the right mouse button and moving your mouse and press C to recenter your view. You can switch to a third person view of your ship by pressing Z. While in third person, you can right click and drag to orbit your view around the ship, and it will automatically snap back to the default position. If you press L to switch camera modes, the camera will stay in the position you drag it to, until you press L again to return to the default mode. When you want to get out of the seat, press escape. On the dashboard in front of you is the primary screen, with the most common controls and information you'll need while flying. On your side you can find a stats screen, which has a similar readout to the ship status screen in your grip. Above your head is the weapons information panel. While this episode isn't about ship to ship combat, you should at least know that this screen tells you if your ship's weapons are enabled or not, and that you can press H to enable or disable them. You should always make sure your weapons are disabled when you enter a no firing zone. The small screen with the green buttons lets you toggle the visibility of the icons on your HUD. Let's look at some of the most important icons to be able to identify. Starter stations are represented with a green rhombus, all other NPC stations are a solid white square, and player ships are shown with a broken white square. Drones are represented with a tan broken pentagon, and static defense drones are broken yellow plus icons. If a ship, station, or drone is currently hostile toward you, their icon will turn red. If they're friendly toward you, for example, a ship in the same fleet as you, the icon will turn green. Asteroid belts are gray broken triangles. Stars are indicated with a gray four-pointed star. Planets are unique in the sense that they will group nearby icons under themselves, if you're far enough away from the planet. If the planet icon is yellow, it means that other icons are being grouped under it, and if it's gray, you're close enough that it isn't grouping nearby icons. Planets without rings are shown with circles, and ringed planets will have a ring around the circle. Moons are partly shaded gray circles. This symbol indicates that you have a mission at the associated location. To move your ship forward, hold W to increase your throttle. As your throttle goes up, you'll see the throttle meter on your dashboard screen fill upwards. You can see your ship's current speed in meters per second in the center of the dash screen. To move backward, hold S to decrease your throttle until the throttle meter starts to fill downward. Even when going in reverse, your speed indicator will still read a positive value, so it's important to keep an eye on the throttle meter itself to see which way your ship is moving. To cut engines and set your throttle to zero, press X. Notice that it takes a small amount of time for a ship to speed up or slow down when changing the throttle value because of the ship's inertia. However, ship physics in this game isn't Newtonian. All ships have a maximum speed they can reach, and ships will always experience drag when no thrust is being applied. Even a ship without power will eventually come to a stop. To pitch and yaw your ship, left click anywhere on your screen and drag your mouse. Moving the mouse up and down will pitch your ship, and moving the mouse left and right will yaw. As you pitch and yaw your ship, their respective meters on the dash screen will fill up, showing how much of the total available thrust for each axis is being used. You can also press tab to toggle free flight mode, which lets you pitch and yaw your ship without needing to left click. In this mode, the dead zone circle in the center of the screen becomes visible. While your cursor is inside this circle, no rotational force will be applied to your ship, functioning as a resting place for your cursor. In click and drag flight mode, the dead zone is centered around the point you initially clicked on the screen. When inside the dead zone, your cursor becomes fainter, and when outside it becomes brighter. To roll your ship, Press Q and E to roll counterclockwise and clockwise, respectively. When rolling, the two roll meters on the dash screen will fill up. To translate your ship port and starboard, press the A and D keys, respectively. To translate the ship up and down, press R and F, respectively. 
When translating your ship, arrows will appear around your crosshair indicating the direction of movement. The ability to target objects is crucial for navigation in this game. Hover over an icon with your cursor to see the name of an object, your current distance to it, and any sub-objects, such as a moon of a planet. While hovering over the icon, press T to target the object. While targeted, the object's current distance to you will display, and things like ships and drones will have their shield, armor, and hull bars shown. To switch to a different target, simply hover over your new target and press T again. If you want to target one of the sub-objects of an icon, like the moon of a planet mentioned earlier, press T multiple times until the desired object is selected. To untarget something, press Y. Now let's look at how to use your ship's built-in warp drive to go between planets in a star system. Every ship, big or small, always comes with the ability to warp. To activate your warp drive, either click the warp button on your dash screen and then press engage, or press J to quickly activate it. While at warp, your dash screen will show you what warp level you're at, along with the equivalent conventional speed. There are 9 warp levels, and each warp level is 9 times as fast as the previous one. To increase your warp level, you can either press the speed up button or press W. To decrease a warp level, press slow down or press S. To drop out of warp, press the stop button or press X. Before warping to your destination, you should always first locate and target it. If you plan to go to one of the NPC stations in the system, you can quickly find that station by looking at the stats screen on your side and clicking Station List. Every NPC station will be listed here, including the station's current distance to you. Clicking a station from the list will automatically target the station for you, saving you time otherwise spent searching for its icon. Once your target is selected, point your ship toward it and press J to go to warp. While at warp, your target info will also include the estimated time to arrival at your current speed. The ETA indicator also includes an arrow, either pointing up or down, showing recommended warp level change. Since this arrow is pointing up, let's increase our warp level. When you reach the recommended warp level, the arrow will disappear. Ships come with a Gravity Auto Warp Drop feature designed to automatically drop your warp level by one if you get too close to a gravitational mass, such as a planet, moon, or star. In general, it will kick in when your ship is moving toward a celestial mass and your ETA to that mass is less than one second. This can be useful, since it means you don't have to manually slow down if you're about to crash into a planet. But if you find it to be a hindrance, you can disable it on the stats screen by going to Engine Status and pressing the Off button under Auto Warp Drop. With Auto Drop disabled, your target indicator will turn light blue instead of green, letting you know that flying directly toward a planet could be dangerous. You will also see yellowish wedge shapes indicating in which direction the nearest body that could drop you is. Steering in the opposite direction can often prevent unwanted gravity drops. As you approach your destination station, be sure that it's on the same side of the planet you are. If it's behind the planet, this symbol will show up next to the distance indicator. When it's time to start slowing down, you'll want to drop your warp level at just the right moment to give yourself enough time to react to drop to the next level. The game recommends you drop when your ETA reaches 2 seconds or lower, but you can drop earlier to give yourself more time between drops, or later for less time between drops. Remember, each warp level is 9 times faster than the previous, so if you drop right as the ETA changes to 1 second, your new ETA will usually be about 9 seconds. If you accidentally overshoot your destination, you can drop a warp level, turn around, then speed back up again. Once you drop to warp level 1, your next drop will put you back in normal space. You'll want to try to end up as close to the station as possible to reduce the amount of time it takes to fly the rest of the way. But you also don't want to drop too close, as you can end up crashing into the station. It likely won't actually destroy your ship or the station if you do crash, but your reputation with that station's faction will go down significantly. Because of this, when you get to warp level 1, you should watch your distance to your target instead of your ETA. Try to drop out of warp when your distance is between 5 and 1 kilometers. That way, you won't have to fly so far to get the rest of the way, but you also don't run the risk of crashing. Fly your ship within 1 kilometer of the station so you have access to station services, and press X to cut your engines and park your ship. Now you know everything you need to get behind the controls of your own starship. The next episode will be all about building, buying, and maintaining ships. If there are any topics you'd like to see covered in a future video, leave your suggestion in a comment below. 
Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to catch the rest of the series.